Alrighty, so let's go ahead and test the V1 now against uh, 67 millisecond, very brief pop shots here from this MPH B3 radar gun. Uh, yeah, let's just get right down to it. Um, the V1 actually doesn't have a KA band uh, pop mode. Uh, all it can do is you can turn off K band pop detection on or off, um, which I'm not going to get too much in the technical details for now, but uh, basically just for the sake of uh, the context of this video, uh, pop mode is always on, is always scanning 33.8, um, no matter what your settings, custom swept or not. But uh, uh, for now, we've got it set up uh, K band on. Um, I've got it set up with a profile. Uh, it's basically custom swept 33.8, 34.7, and 35.5. TMF2 off, not that that matters. Um, but pop 2 is, or pop 2, yeah, I guess it is pop 2. Pop is always on, just like it always is. But uh, let's go ahead and shoot. 33.8. Oh, right, yeah, I've got my phone set up to actually announce the frequency. Um, one thing about uh, the V1 is it actually doesn't differentiate between pop and normal uh, 33.8. So if we turn off uh, 30 or pop shots and we transmit, um, you can ignore the blue background. I've got it set up like that for all legit KA, um, just to let myself know in the field, like, oh, blue background, KA. Uh, anyways, as you can see, uh, it just says 33.8, and if I enable pop and I shoot it, 33.8. Uh, on the V1 itself, there is no designation for pop. It's just laser, KA, K-band, and X-band. There's no pop light. There's no pop designation. And on the phone itself, it doesn't actually tell you if it's pop mode. So, uh, yeah, you can't actually really tell the difference with the V1. Um, but pop is always turned on, and it's going to do a great job. So as you can see, uh, we were at uh, two for two so far. Let's go ahead and give it a third shot. 33.8. Three and three. Let's turn the volume down a smidge. Ah, and my phone slips. Okay, what I'll do is I'm going to shoot uh, ten shots, and I'll turn off K-pop just for the sake of uh, thoroughness. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait a period of time either just talking and narrating some stuff, or I'm actually just going to sit silently and wait for the detector to unpark. Uh, I want it to basically stop searching for 33.8 pop in particular and go back to resuming the entire range of frequencies. And uh, in order to do that, I'm just going to wait a period of time. I think in the V1 it's like 15 seconds or so. Uh, let's go ahead and give it shot number four. 33.8. Okay. Uh, so four for four. So what I'm going to do for the sake of brevity for the video is I'm actually going to go, uh, when I edit the video, I'm going to cut out the chunks in between the pop shots and speed it up just to make the video a little bit quicker. So we're at uh, four for four now. And let's see how it does out of 10 shots. 33.8. <laughs> Double bogey. Uh, five for five. 33.8. Six out of six. 33.8. Seven out of seven. Doing great so far. And yeah, the V1, I mean, it's doing awesome, as usual, as it always does in this test. So, 7 out of 7. Um, quick note about pop. It doesn't really matter how uh, how good a detector can detect pop. Um, pop mode isn't in use, and it's not legal to issue citations. So in the real world, uh, pop detection is not really all that important, and it's really not a good reason to choose one detector over another. But it's really easy for me to test uh, just kind of while hanging out in my living room, and uh, I can. So, all right. We're at 7 out of 7. Go for shot 8. 8. Great. Don't worry so much about the arrows either. Sometimes it says it's ahead, sometimes it says it's behind. It just has to do with the signal a little bit stronger from the front antenna, the rear antenna. Um, the signal bounces around here when I'm sitting in my living room, so it's not going to be accurate. So works fine in the real world. Goes a little goofy here when I'm sitting inside. We're at 8 out of 8. 9 out of 9. And those voice announcements, uh, they're actually coming from my phone, not from the V1. I've got some... Uh, text-to-speech audio files actually programmed as ringtones, which then get loaded in into Yad V1 into the app. And I've set it so that uh, any 33.8-ish signals uh, play that ringtone, which does 33.8. So, cool, if you're curious. We're at 9 for 9. 33.8. Yeah, so the V1's at 100%. Um, I lost count when I was explaining that last part. I don't know if we're at 9 shots or we're at 10 shots, so I'll just shoot one more just for the sake of... Uh, Making sure. 
so yeah, so far the V1's at 100%. Um, the only other detector that I've tested so far uh, in this round of testing that's done 10 for 10 here in uh, pop testing is going to be the Beltronics RX 65 S7. So yeah, good job on the Bell and good job on the V1 for actually detecting all these shots. Well done. And let's go for the last shot. Cool. Makes sense. All right, cool. So there you go. There's the V1. This is version 3.8945, detecting a 67 millisecond pop. Um, as far as pop, we can, just for the sake of, you know, testing, I'll go ahead and turn uh, pop off. Uh, we'll go into the V1 settings. Uh, pop mode on the V1 is actually for K-band pop. It's a little bit different uh, setting. It's designed, do you want to push it? Yes. It's designed for a uh, 16 millisecond pop. Um, turning it off actually does slow down K-band detection by like a f six hundredths of a second or something we found in testing. I'll shoot it again. It's not actually going to really have a difference on the KA band pop detection. Maybe it'll go 9 for 10, I don't know, just because, you know, funny things happen when you put a camera on stuff, but we're at 1 for 1. Uh, K-pop is designed to, you know, help with uh, K-band pop detection, not KA. There's not actually a KA version of pop you can turn on and on in the V1, or on or off. Um, so pop mode on the V1 is actually different than pop mode on the Escort or the uh, other products, Whistlers, Cobras, what have you. Two. So I can turn it off, and uh, I'll just go ahead and run through these uh, shots here real quick, but you'll see it's going to be the same thing. Three. Four. Wait, did I turn pop on or off? I think I had K-pop off. Did I just get it backwards? Four. Well, that's silly. I had K-pop off the whole time, and I went 10 for 10, and now I turned it on. Um, all right, my bad. So we're at four. Yeah, the other detectors I started actually running with pop off. Um, or, sorry, I had uh, pop on. This one I started with pop off, and now I've got it on. So we're at five for five. Whatever. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a miss. Look at that. So uh, we've got five out of six. I think last time I ran the test, it ran uh, nine out of ten with uh, K-pop on and off. So right now we're five out of six. Six out of seven. Seven out of eight. Eight out of nine, and nine out of ten. Cool. So in that case, the V1 V1 ran nine out of ten with uh, K-pop turned on. So we'll go ahead and turn that back off. Uh, turning it off does help with uh, K-band false alerts. Oh, not TMF two. Do that and that save. Cool. So, anyways, there you go. Uh, as you can see, the V1 does do a great job at detecting pop. Um, the way the V1 actually scans, it always does a whole bunch of 33-8 uh, sweeps. You can't actually disable 33-8 uh, detection on the V1, whether you have it in uh, all bands mode or you try to do custom sweeps. Uh, for whatever reason, the way the V1 is programmed, it's always, always doing a whole bunch of sweeps around 33-8, so it's just natively going to have fantastic 33-8 detection. So as you can see, it ran uh, 10 out of 10 and then 9 out of 10 in pop shots. Um, and you can't even turn off 33.8 or 33.8 pop. So it does a great job there. Cool. Uh, not really that big of a deal in terms of pop detection in the real world, but there you go. If you're curious with the V1, how well it does. Uh, does a great job at pop. Great. Doesn't really matter. But if you're curious, there you go.